Hello, I'm Tom Meeks, and this is 3D Design for Fun and Life, featuring Moment of Inspiration, using the uniquely easy noun and verb method. This session is More Noun Collection. If we open the Draw Curve pad, we see eight noun groups, and the eighth noun group is more. More contains three nouns, point, helix, and conic. We're going to start out with point. When we select a point, we will create a single point on the screen, unless we say repeat, and we can do it over and over and over again. Otherwise, there are no additional options for point. Well, let's do that. We'll have object snap turned on. We'll click on repeat. We already have a center point right here, but we're going to add some points on the end of each of these lines. Okay, I have turned off all of the lines, only leaving the points. And now we're going to reconnect these lines, but we will do it in the 3D view. Let's go to the 3D view now. You'll notice that the points are not on the same plane. It looked that way from the top view, but if we look at it from the 3D view, we can see that the points are at least on two different levels, and the peak point is way up here. We're going to use the points as snaps so that we can connect lines in very specific orientations, snapping from point to point. And we're going to go around and we'll always start at the top. We're going to make it easy by saying repeat. There we go. Now we'll just repeat that all the way around. And each line you'll notice is able to draw to a specific location because there is a point at that location. And that point acts as a magnet. We can snap right to any of those points. Now we may have to swing this around to make sure we get all of those points in. It looks like we have. Let's go to the top view. Yes, we have. We can see all of them. Now I'm gonna hit cancel. And now I'm going to select each of the lines that we created. Again, it looks like they're all on the same plane. But if we do a loft, construct loft with the closed, we'll see that we were able to create a 3D object from those points because the points act as magnets or snap points for the lines and the lines now are at different planes. And when we loft that, we get this interesting figure. We can make this a 3D printable object by saying extrude and we'll extrude it too. And that's a 3D printable object made possible because we had points in space and connected those points in space. The next noun in the more group is helix. Helix creates spirals, and there are two kinds of spirals. In the first example, we will demonstrate a flat spiral. When we click on the helix noun, the prompt says pick start of axis, and we see one option, tapered. We will ignore the tapered option and select the origin as the start of our axis by clicking on the left mouse button. The prompt changes to pick end of axis, and we see a button with the label flat spiral. We'll click on that button. The prompt changes to pick start radius and anchor point. We will be picking both the inside and outside radius for the spiral. We'll start with the inside radius by entering a value of 10 and set the anchor point with the left mouse click. The prompt changes to pick end radius and we'll define the outside radius 
by entering a value of 40 into the end radius text box. The prompt changes to Helix Options, and we see that we can enter the number of turns the spiral will make from the starting radius to the ending radius. We'll leave this value at 5. We can also reverse the twist by clicking on the checkbox. We'll click twice to demonstrate. And then select Done to complete the spiral. The result is a flat curve that cannot be 3D printed, but it can easily be converted to a 3D object that can be printed in just a few steps. We'll start by adding two lines. One at the beginning of the spiral, and another line at the end. We will join all three curves. We will prepare for the next step by using a fillet value of 2 at the corner point on the inside. And a fillet value of 4 on the corner point on the outside. We will offset the spiral with a value of 2 millimeters, creating two parallel spirals. We add a connecting line at each end. and then use Edit Join to join all of the lines to create a closed curve. We can now use Extrude with this closed curve to create a working spring that can be 3D printed. The spring is actually quite strong when printed with an FDM 3D printer because of the way the printer will follow the contours of the spiral wall in a continuous flow. It's really kind of cool. Now, let's move on to the other style of helix. The standard helix has vertical depth. It is useful for creating coil springs and screw threads. We will work in the front view. To create a standard helix, we click on the Helix Noun button. The prompt reads, Pick Start of Axis, and we see that there is a tapered option. If this option is not checked, we will only have to define the start radius. If it is checked, we must choose both a start and end radius. We will check the tapered option and select the origin as the start of our axis by clicking the left mouse button. The prompt now reads, Pick End of Axis. We'll choose a point on the z-axis. This point will define the height of our helix. The prompt changes to pick start radius and anchor point. While we can enter the radius directly, we'll use our mouse to set both the radius and the anchor point using a left mouse click. Because we selected the tapered option, we are presented with a new prompt asking us to pick end radius. The default is to make this radius the same size as the first but we can make it smaller or larger. We'll use a smaller radius size. We do this by entering the second radius size directly into the end radius text box and clicking on OK. The helix preview appears and we see two new helix options, turns and pitch. As we change the value of one of these options, the second option is automatically updated. For creating a coil spring, we might prefer defining the number of turns. We'll try 8 turns, and the pitch immediately changes. The pitch is the distance between the start of each rotation. When creating screw threads, we define the pitch. We'll change the pitch to 10 mm, and the number of turns is updated. If we check the reverse twist checkbox, the twist goes in the opposite direction. Helix is commonly used with the sweep verb. To create a coiled spring, we can sweep a circle around the new helix.
To create threads, we can use a triangular shape. We always check to see that our triangular profile is located at the beginning of the helix. And sweep using the flat option. Project number 6 will explore how we create screws and nuts using the helix noun. The third noun in the Moore group is conic. But before we demonstrate the conic noun, let's examine the potential of conic sections. If we slice a cone shape, we create cross sections. We will slice this cone into four different regions with lines that intersect at different angles. The black boundaries of these regions are called conic sections. The first region, cut by a perpendicular line, results in a circle conic section. The second region was cut at a slight angle and forms an ellipse. The third region, cut at a deeper angle, intersects the base and is called a parabola. And finally, the steepest cut resulted in a conic section known as hyperbola. Before beginning our conic demonstration, I want to point out that three points have been placed in the view window to help guide our placement of the conic frames. There are also two arc segments that we will use to demonstrate a special use of conic. All of these conic section forms can be created using the conic curve noun. In the more group, we click on the conic noun button. There are two major steps required to form a conic curve. The first step is to create a frame consisting of two connected line segments using three points. The frame defines the endpoints and the tangent directions of the generated curve. The first prompt says, pick start point. This is the starting point of the first line segment. We can click anywhere in the view window, but we'll select our first point. The prompt changes to pick endpoint. This is the end of the second line segment. The prompt now changes to pick apex, and we'll choose a location where the two lines meet and the frame is complete. The next step is to define the conic curve using the mouse or by entering an RHO or through point value. That value must be less than one we will create four conic curves. With an RHO value of 0.5, the curve is a segment of a parabola. With RHO greater than 0.5 and less than one, the curve is a segment of a hyperbola. With RHO less than 0.5, the curve is a segment of an ellipse. When the line segments form a 90 degree angle, as they do in this case, using an RHO of 0.41 results in a curve that is a segment of a circle. We can test that with the three point circle noun. One of the special behaviors of conic allows us to smoothly join unconnected curves. If the ends of the frame are snapped onto curves, the intersection of the curve tangents is available as a tan tan snap point for placing the middle point of the frame. We connect the endpoints and then slowly move the mouse to find the intersection of both tan snap points using the temporary construction lines. The beauty of the conic noun is that it allows us to create organic curves. It can be particularly useful for creating jewelry, 
where flowing lines are desirable. This is 3D Design for Fun and Life. 3D Design Courseware based on Moment of Inspiration by Tom Meeks. Points, Helix, and Conic. The nouns of the Moore group complete the robust complement of nouns available to you in Moment of Inspiration. When combined with Moment of Inspiration's verbs, you will be able to use all of these nouns to create many wonderful things for yourself and those you love for the rest of your life, should you choose to do so. And we sincerely hope you do.